Man, oh man, here we go again, guys. And we are back on the main channel, this time with some S10 action. That's right. Uh, we had got this truck out of the salvage yard, I don't know, a few months back or whatever. I had said uh, we were gonna do a giveaway. And speaking of which, I wanna thank our uh, sponsors who decided to uh, be part of this little giveaway. All these guys decided to chip in a little money to help uh, do some fixing on this truck. Uh, for the subscriber who's gonna end up winning it. We don't even know how you're gonna win it yet, so don't ask, I, I'll let you know when we know. Uh, but, some quick thank yous. Thank you to Mortsky Repair, you old grumpy man. He decided to sponsor. Big thank you to Sleeper Dude. And both of these guys are YouTubers, guys, who also wanted to chip in and sponsor. We got DNH Classics, who y'all know I go to get parts from all the time. We do a lot of business back and forth. Next up, we've got the Bowling Brothers out of California. These guys have been a large supporter of the channel for a long time, and you'll be seeing one of their hot rod frames on the channel soon. And lastly, but not leastly, we got Jay Hunto's Garage, who is also a YouTube channel, guys. And if y'all wanna check any of these guys out, I'm gonna try to remember to put a link uh, to their YouTubes or stores or websites or whatever in the description of this video. Uh, thank you to these sponsors. Let's not forget our last and final sponsor, actually, and that's Puddin's Fab Shop. Thanks, Puddin's Fab Shop. All right, guys, for real, though, uh, I've been charging this battery. I don't remember if this is my good battery or my bad battery. We're about to find out. We're going to huff this thing down to the truck. Uh, we drove the truck from the salvage yard, guys, so I don't think I've robbed anything off of it other than the gas can and the battery. So in theory, we should be able to add a battery and gas and get this thing going again. The old peepaw truck with the visor on the front. Nope. Oh, shit the bed. I thought this battery had the side post on it. It don't. I reckon we'll rob our wagon battery. I know y'all see that double dual snorkel goodness. I built that yesterday for this thing and I fixed a lot of other little piddly stuff, still doing the shakedown stuff. And I put it on the second channel, guys. It ain't on there yet, but it, well, no, is it? I don't know. My uh, recording schedule's confused. But any of the little odds and ends I gotta do on the wagon will be on the second channel from now on. More little, just tweaking this or fixing that until she's perfect. And by golly, right now, she's getting pretty close to perfect. That was a cool build. Mm-hmm. Get on there. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Something powered up. She's in there buzzing. You see that double-belted supercharger right there? That's why we're getting this truck away, because she's got all the turbo power. What a cherry dash. Look at this thing. Oh, whole reason I went with this. Hey, now. I'm talking. Hush it. whole reason I went with this truck was because looking in here and looking at the dash, I was like, if this was my truck, I'd want to drive it every day getting a look at this. How's that steering wheel protector in such good shape? It accents the bug deflector perfectly. <laughs> Cranking like a champion. Now our fuel line, our fuel line I duct taped down the side of the truck and we had put the gas tank back here. So we'll see if uh, we can get fuel up to her or not. All right, we ain't got fuel up to her yet. That's the custom duct tape pins right there. Just flip her open simply. Are we even starting to pick up? Here's how we can tell. We'll just <laughs> drag that all the way up here and try to dump and we ain't getting nothing. She may be a little air locked. <laughs> Rob us a little get her done 91 out of there. How's that? Maybe if we get her to bust off, she'll prime a little easier. Pour it everywhere where if it backfires, we lose the truck. That's a very precise pour with that. Well, it ran until it didn't. This thing is having some carburetor issues, I know that. She 
trying to run this carburetor is already not the happiest i know that uh, it was probably the weakest point as far as the running driving stopping went uh, from getting it going before the carburetor needs some love i know that uh so that ain't helping us any on top of i still don't think we're just not getting fuel up there oh robot bring me my fancy water guarantee y'all fiji bottles never been turned into gas tanks before <laughs> they're gonna today well, that's meant to be it fits right in there whoever zip tied this did a superb job just pull it through the zip ties yeah bang that won't even hardly cut that blade's duller than a mortsky video All natural Fiji gasoline. I ain't even got to make it far here. I just want to drive it into the shop for some reason. Should have grabbed a funnel when I was in there, huh? All right, we're gonna try to shorten up our hose here into a closer tank. Now we're gonna try it again. Come on, baby. Mortski. There ain't no way it's going through that much fuel. Maybe help prime that up some. We basically got another will it run going on here, don't we? I don't know, she may be running. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. All right, we're gonna run out of gas. We don't get after it. Don't die, don't die. Oh yeah, we don't know where we're going, but we're going. I cleared everything besides a chair and a lawnmower. Give her hell, give her hell. Oh, I can see that away. <laughs> Can't be mad at that. You finally get some fuel to it and it seems to wanna run. Uh, pretty good actually, of course. I don't know why. Man, I can't judge nothing. I'm over this side quite a bit. I need to go that away. We'll worry about parking straight or getting centered here later. Right now, I wanna kinda go over what we're about to do and what my plans are for this S10 Durango. We just wanna give her the full little, you know, tune up that it can get to be the best little 2.8 liter it can be. Oh shoot, I did not give a shout out to uh, Sam at St. Louis uh, Salvage as one of our sponsors. He not only sponsored this tailgate, I told him I was looking for a blue S10 tailgate. All he had was a blue Sonoma one that we're gonna make work. But he also asked if he could sponsor it. So that's two of my local salvage yards who I work with. And then the other YouTubers guys. So sorry, Sammy. Uh, yeah, you should just end our friendship right there since I forgot. Shame on me. Sponsored the truck and gave us a tailgate and I forgot. What do you think about a guy like that, guys? Uh, but right there, we got two carburetor kits. I'm not sure which one of them we need, but that's where we're gonna start, guys. We're gonna start on the engine side of things. And I got them carb kits in stock. Other parts should be on their way here shortly. Uh, so let's see if we can rob this carburetor off here. <laughs> My redneck elbow there. If this was my truck, I would pull all that crap off there. I'd desmog it and pull every bit of that crap off there. But it ain't, so I ain't going to, uh, because if someone who wins it happen lives in California, well, they're probably gonna need that crap, I guess. Not that she's gonna pass inspection anyhow, just look at getting that carburetor off there. That itself looks like hell. Boy, howdy. I forgot to order uh, 12 new rolls of vacuum hose for this thing. Uh, this is a little overwhelming to look at, guys. I'm not even sure where to start. Besides start pulling crap. Perfect, that ripped. Same with that one, we're doing good. I did grab us some tools here. 
Another split vacuum hose, no surprise there. There goes a return spring. Oh, one of them style clips. I about broke it tugging on it. It clips over the end of the shaft and then slides on. One of them style clips. That is attached, so we need to disconnect this. What else we got going on here? We got a good squeezy clamp right there for the auxiliary vent tube. I just made that up. Fuel lines on the very back, I do remember that. You can see that tube net right there, which is pretty stripped and rounded looking. Someone's uh, been on that before. Luckily, I was able to break that free. She just threaded out. Got another hose on the back. Cause I'm reminded why I don't mess with newer vehicles. This is considered newer vehicle to me, guys. If it's new enough to have all this bull crap, it's a new vehicle. This son of a buck's practically a 2023 in my mind. Oh, here she finally went. Now I'm just trying to get to see where the nuts are back there. Hey, we should probably unhook this battery. Since we are doing a little, little maintenance, better safe than sorry right there. How in the cluck cluck chicken duck are we supposed to get in there? Ain't gonna be able to get a wrench in there. Ain't gonna be able to get a socket in there. What the hell? Can't really get a wiggler in there. So we may just have to give this thing a way knowing it needs a carb rebuilt, I guess. <laughs> well, we may, we, we, we put in a good effort, guys. Let's see here. Maybe that right there. I think she's gonna get some custom machine work. First, I'm gonna open up this hole down in there uh, where that stud can go through that. Or so it'll maybe help clear it. That should be better. And then I'm gonna take some off of our socket here with the old slicing dice. What I'm trying to do is get this socket to be as low profile as possible, basically. Then I'm gonna compare my Uno Wiggler. Now you don't wanna compare your Wigglers with too many people. <laughs> My go home sad. Uh, the Milwaukee Wiggler's definitely taller than the Dewalt Wiggler. So we wanna use that one. I'm gonna see how that pops down in there. And I think, because that's recessed in there, we can take some off the end of this and get that to sit in there further. The more we can compress this, the better chance we have of it working. right there i mean we're saving close to a half inch of material right at a half inch let's see if she's gonna work though that's the tricky part is she gonna drop down on this yeah she's dropping she's dropping oh baby i don't know it's gonna work yes yes oh yeah luckily that nut's spinning really free holy cow guys i really didn't know how we were gonna get in there Let's not celebrate too much because that's only one out of four. Success! That one was a super tight fit. I actually pulled this clip to push that throttle or that little lever back. Then I cycled the throttle that that picks up on and it got it out the way. I don't think I was gonna have to pull the clip. Just cycling the throttle would have worked. Two out of four. Oh, baby, she's a little tricky. Three out of four. Can't seem to get on this one. I think I'd be able to. Hmm. Oh, she dropped on. Yes. All right. 
that is very picky about dropping on there. I mean, it literally has to be just perfect. That little cheap garage sale socket right there just saved our ass. Saving private pudding's ass. It's a good thing too, cause I was about ready to crush it. I took a ton of pictures of that, by the way, before I ever took it off there or started disconnecting anything, I mean. The more pictures, the better. Boom, there she is. I think we're gonna need some of these. Hopefully those aren't too big. Just a real small half inch drive, you know. Bring her here to the old workbench. That's what we need right there. Just had to help old Slick get hooked onto the trailer. He's borrowing it. You know what they say, if you want friends, get a trailer. I think every single one of them is a slightly different size. Those heads are different. Those may be the same. That one looks a little bit smaller diameter. We better take some pictures here too. Smile for the Instagram. This right here has to be the dumbest crap I've ever seen in my whole entire gosh darn life. Look at that configuration right there. That should make you wanna just take it to the scrap trailer and throw it in there. Luckily, the rest of these sides are pretty simple, I guess. I'm trying to be a little optimistic here. Just seeing that would make me pull a Mortski, make me all angry, grumpy. <laughs> All right, I'll leave Mortski alone. That's enough. We're still friends, guys. <laughs> I said in one video, that's why me and Mortski aren't friends no more, and some of y'all took that to heart. One guy sent him a real nasty email about me. <laughs> Mortski screenshotted it and sent it to me, and me and him had a good laugh about it. That's everything. Everything except all these damn levers. I noticed that bolt there was part of this bracket and this bracket's bolted up here. So yeah, that's gonna have to come off for all that. Guys, what is our best bet here? Besides throw a match on it. Yep, that's never going back together. Pretty sure we just stripped that. Claw Hammer Customs. Got lucky. Pull that little thingy my jigger. Oh, <laughs> guys, that was hell. That rod's gotta go in there in such a little precise way. Then when we go to put this back together, it's gonna have to go like that as well. A spring fell out of here. I'm assuming that came out of our uh, accelerator pump somewhere. Maybe not. Ain't got a clue where that came from. Unless, well, it may go on the bottom like that. Fits it really good. Bill! What the hell, Bill? No announce show up? I like it. The world's stupidest carburetor. Yep, probably it's just off of that. Wait till I show you this picture. How's that for a linkage setup? <laughs> Good thing you took a picture of it. <laughs> Holy crap, right? Yeah. Look at it from straight on the yeah, side. And I'm supposed to get all that back together. We'll see. This old gasket is just brittle as can be. Yeah, here at Crunch. Guys, I'll be honest, I don't even know what the hell I'm looking at in this thing. I'm basically gonna try to pull off all the old gasket clean any ports we can find this yeah. little cover seems to hold our float set up let's see how this is looking Ooh, oh yummy you can see our little needle there i guess that just drops down as well our seat because we, we feed in from down here guys so then uh that's where your fuel actually comes through look how dirty this bolt is chunks nothing good uh, assuming that's coming from our tank setup. Guess we need to pull the bottom off this thing. Let's get the base plate off of it. I'm gonna do a little mining here, guys. <laughs> Gotta mine out this dirt and crud and rust so we can get to this bolt on the bottom. 
See ya, Bill. Look at that, guys. Just make a mess. Trust that one. Kill. That holds a little filter that uh, had seen better days. Had to take those bolts because that was attached to that, but to get that bolt, I had to take that, which that needed to come apart anyhow. Uh, yeah, the disassembly continues. Look at that thick old gasket in there. Oh, thick boy. This will never run again. Now this gasket is on here and crunchy. Guys, I'm just gonna do the best I can to clean up any of these gasket surfaces. That is about 30 plus minutes of cleaning just on this body of it, guys. That gasket on the bottom was, uh, it was on there. Took every kind of poker scraper and everything else I had to get that. Well, that thing's actually pretty clean. I don't know I'm gonna take it apart any more than this. And I really don't plan on cleaning on the outside, and I know you're thinking, what the hell? Uh, my little micro cleaner thingy broke, and uh, I don't have one right now. And honestly, with us not doing nothing else underneath the hood, I think the best, the way these things look best is just untouched to me. Like if we're gonna have a dirty old air cleaner and all the brackets and all that stuff, nothing's new looking, a new shiny carb on it, don't make much sense to me. So instead of trying to worry about the outside being pretty, I'm gonna worry about getting this inside as clean as can be. I'll be honest guys, I think this carburetor is good as far as uh, like our little ports and stuff in there. Carburetor would act fine. You, you'd hear it's idling pretty good this morning. Uh, the main, main time, you'd have issues. I'd be like revving it up, almost like accelerator pump. I'm pretty happy with blowing all that out. Any of the ports that I needed to be able to blow through, I could feel air coming out the other side. Uh, so I guess I'm just gonna take some brake clean and spray our bowl here and see if I can't get it a little bit cleaner. I need like some little like uh, gun cleaning brushes, you know what I mean? Now that soaks, we will give the rest of the body of the brake clean rebuild. Uh, basically whatever it knocks off, it knocks off and whatever stays, stays. Got the rebuild in a can right here. Get our base plate next. And I'm gonna work this in here as much as I can, and then we'll go clean the body up. Uh, let's give this a spray down. Oh, well, that was a quick little clean up. Trying to maintain somewhat clean workspace here. Did the Sweet Patina sponsor this build? I'm not very good at hosting giveaways or the sponsors and stuff, am I? I don't remember, guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get with everyone later and write it down. Uh, yeah, I think he did. Why wouldn't he? He's part of this. I don't remember, guys. Pretty sure he did. So let's thank our other sponsor, Sweet Patina. We're gonna, he's part of, he's part of us anyhow, guys. Y'all know he's been with me from the start as well, about 2,000 subscribers worth, uh, believing in me, pushing me, encouraging me to chase my dreams. Uh, so we support him no matter what. On top of that, uh, his TKO hand cleaning wipes right here. I'm gonna use one to get some of that crap off my hands before we proceed with the rebuild. If you wanna get you one of these good hand cleaning wipes or any of his other cleaning products, you can get it at sweetpatina.com. Just use that old promo code on the screen. Now we got two carburetor kits here, and I don't know which one we need. I'll just 
just have to tear into it here and see. What the hell is that? I'll say that's it, ain't it? That looks right. What in the... <laughs> that one's it. This one comes with an optional uh, little short guy. <laughs> this gasket is, if you have this feature over here, that erects that away. Oh no, we need that one. We need the one with the erection. Or do we just need that one that cradles it? Or does it honestly even really matter? I don't think it'll matter too much because that drops down in there and that's what was full of dirt daubers. So I think we'll get rid of the one with the shaft on it and we'll just go to the one that uh, is kind of the shape of a snowman. That's what I was thinking it looked like. It looked like a snowman with a really long uh, nose or something. What were y'all thinking it looked like? If it wasn't any of them three, you got two more to choose from. I'm fairly certain we have the correct one chosen with that. There's our base plate gasket, manifold, the top. I think this kit right here is gonna do it. <clears throat> I'm gonna head it back to the leftover pork chops for lunch. That's right, I was a good boy and ate my lunch, so I got me a little ice cream kit. This one's birthday cake and it's quite delicious. Don't judge me for eating ice cream with a fork. You don't know what I've been through. Fork was from eating my pork chops and I didn't want to dirty no more silverware than I had to. All right, let's roll on here with the body of this thing. Yep. We're just going back together with everything the way it came apart. Y'all seen Bill check this earlier, or maybe you didn't, I don't know. He was shaking it, saying, making sure there wasn't any no fuel in it. Any no fuel in it. That's some solid English. Guys, if you're bad at English and speaking ain't your greatest thing, don't hide from it like I used to do. Embrace it and market it. Use being an idiot to your advantage. <laughs> It's like they give you a new seal for in there, but they do not give you a new filter for in there. That makes perfect sense. A little blow test there on the needle and seat. Got a little lightheaded, don't worry about me. On this side, we gotta do our accelerator pump. To do it, we're basically just cleaning it up and replacing the seal. A little scrub, scrub, scrub. Give it a little bit of love. Oh, don't break that. Careful now. Jeez Louise. Hey, we got some more parts. Uh-oh. Damn it. I thought I heard that plastic crack. That ain't good. Backing up what I do by half the store. No one else in Pot County gonna be able to work on an S10 now. <laughs> Hopefully that don't mess us up too bad, that piece breaking off there. Never had one break before. Uh, usually when these come with the new seal for that, they come with that little thing. You sit it right there and it'll whoop, flare it right around that. So that goes right back there. And are we ready to put some stuff together or what? Boy, this is gonna be hell. I know I said there's a trick we got to do, but I done forgot the trick. The trick is not to go insane trying to get this put back together. That's the trick. I got this. I got this. I got this. I can do it. I will do it. I have to do it. Let's do it. Do it. Well, that's how it goes. Only issue is we need to put this back in there. Okay, okay. I think 
it's all back together guys i'm not gonna lie uh no that was not fun but actually getting it all back together over here was not as bad as i thought it was gonna be or it went a little better than i thought it would i think we need to put a vacuum hose from here to here anything else did i miss mm, i think we're gonna try our luck like that Snip this little piece of vacuum hose there. Boop. And boop. So speaking of vacuum hose, before we go back together with this, vacuum hoses are splitting left and right. Uh, it's kind of easier to see all that with that carburetor machine out of there. So let's take a little gander while we have the opportunity. All right, so some of the stuff's real easy to kind of see what it needs like that to that, no big deal. Um, but some of this other stuff, like these little style connections, I'm not sure what to do about. Is that old molded one piece or can I replace this little section of hose? I don't knows. Let's see here. Oh yeah, we can. So that needs to go back to that. This needs a little short piece. I cannot believe I'm about to fix all this. It is a good thing I have them two reels of vacuum hose. I've had them forever. And uh, usually only vacuum hose hook I hook up goes to the damn distributor for the vacuum advance and past that, we're deleting it. <laughs> so this needs to go to our T, that then goes to a Y, that then goes to where? Oh, yep, right there to our blow off valve for the turbo here. And then this one runs over to another T because why would it not? Oh, good gracious. Snip, snip. We'll just take this whole set up. This is just damn ridiculous, guys. I'd like to find whoever thought this was a good idea, whoever engineer, engineered this, and I'd like to uppercut them right in their man jewels. All right, a little rebuild here. So this went here with a stubby. And this is another stubby. One went to the blow off valve. And this one went over here to this T. That goes to this elbow, apparently. Yep. All right, no more rebuild action. Voila, rebuild. Vacuum hose professional, that is what I am. Vacuum hose professional, who can fix it, I can. Hot damn, Uncle Sam. Never wanna touch vacuum again. All right, there we go. Got this side all together. I did have to step up to a bigger hose for here because of down there. Now come across the front here, Look at this hellacious setup right there, guys. Oh yeah, baby. It goes down to this one down here. We get to do it all again. As much fun as that is, I'm just gonna knock it out because it's the same thing, just replacing hoses. Where's my hose at? There my hoses is. All right, twice is enough, I won't do it again. My hose. Had to do a little redneck in here, guys. All these were fine, but this one here, it's like the hose was molded in there. So I just cut us a little stubby of a piece of 3 16 brake line and stuck it in there, huh? What's wrong with that right there? What well, is not a damn thing, Alex? Well, I learned something new today. Replacing what we can on this side. I may have messed up here. I don't really know, honestly. Replaced all these little stubbies. Not this thicker stuff. I think it's okay. None of it's cracked out. It's uh, still got a little flex to it and everything, so I think it's all right. But I was wondering where the distributor was feeding. And it's somewhere here on the bottom side, the hose sticks up and it was barely hanging there. So it was cracked pretty good. And as I touched it, boop, vacuum, lo vacuum hose just fell down. Uh, so that, that could be some of our bogging right there. So what I learned was, cause I wanna pull that distributor where I can kind of see what vacuum lines are hidden behind that. Distributor cap, not the distributor. We're doing a tune up on this thing anyhow. Uh, so I was like, where's number one? So just assuming I started wiggling on this right here, maybe you can see that's moving number two. Ah, number one's going over here. So on a 2.8 liter, we've got one, three, five, two, four, six. 
and I've never had a distributor with a fancy little cap on top that tells you what's what, uh, so I don't know how to get this off there. All right, how do we get fancy little cap here off? Reach down in and holy wind is blowing out there. There she goes. So we know right here's number one. Pretty sure I forgot to say distributor cap when I was ordering all my goodies earlier. Oh yeah, look at that corroded sucker right there. It didn't even want to come off there. Now the rest of the smog stuff on this vehicle that goes around here is gonna make doing stuff just like the plugs and plug wires tricky because it is tight fit down there. Oh my gosh, couldn't hardly pull that sucker out of there. There goes that one. Clearly, these things want to battle me. You want to battle me? You want to battle me? Hey! Yeah, 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 yeah. Think again before you start a battle you don't want. I've looked bigger for less. I ain't scared of you, 2.8 liter. And don't forget the high performance red coil wire here. Them guys are probably working in that shop right there going, he's in there whooping the shit out of something. <laughs> That's right, I am. Oh yeah, I got some nice corrosion in there on the cap as well. It's crazy how corroded that one is. With the cap out the way, we can see more rat's nest and leaves and other crap. All right, I see our vacuum. What, there's a hard line down there or what? Oh yeah. Maybe one of these hard lines that run all the way to the back. Well, we definitely want to replace that one. Got it. This one that was there is broken. I'm following it around. And it comes all the way around to here. And come to find out, I didn't even know this. I just got a dangling ball here. Yep, old dangle ball. Put in time, the ball dangler. Kind of has a ring to it. Why would they possibly do this? Just to piss everyone off. Placed all the hoses down in there and I see what's going on now. My ball's broken, actually. Hey, Ma, I got some broken balls. There's the other piece of the old ball. Just grabbed a couple sheet metal screws with a washer. Gonna work pretty good right there. Get our ball clamped back into place. Gotta be careful when your balls start dangling, guys. Much better. Oh, see if we can get our spark pluggies out of here. She looks a little fouled out. That thing was last changed in 1990. Never. Ugh. Number four. There's number six. Number four. Yeah, a little bit different style plug there. Looks pretty good in there. Just look through all these. Walls look beautiful from what I can see. Got a little carbon build up on top of the piston. And it looks like just the slightest amount of corrosion spotted through. Uh, nothing to be scared of, guys. She looked pretty damn good in there. Get us a few new units to go in there. Tried reading our little thing here. Spark plug gap. Pretty sure that says 45 thou. I'll double verify her on the internet, but I'm pretty sure that's the that's the magic number. These probably came pre-gapped. Oh, no, they did not. Open her up. She wants 45 thou, let's give her 45. She's about to be running like a pissed off ape. All right, the old screaming demon with some uh, actual gap in there. Let's check on the old one, see see what it was gapped to. About 37, 42, and 40. Damn variety bucket, like going to KFC. Not ours, ours are all gonna be matching. Attempting to install the plug, I dropped it. Here's a pro tip, check your gap. Hey, looky there. Uh, we're closed up to 40 thousandths now. The reason I know to check that I did it on the wagon. I dropped it, didn't check it. We were running off of seven cylinders and come to find out the one electrode, that tip was completely closed. If you drop it, check it. I don't know the angle of these very well, but I'm gonna try. Hey yo, there's two. 
and torqued. All them started right back in like they wanted to go. Mm. The other one's too long for here. This one's too short. We just need the little tiniest extension ever. That was it, guys. That one extra inch sometimes just makes all the difference in the world. One inch will get you. So there I was on a wind blowing, medium warm October day, pulling spark plugs like I had done many a time. Everything was going nice and good until, until we made it to our very last spark plug. Now hold on, don't get too scared. Nothing broke off or stripped out, nothing like that. Just as I pulled number three there, that thing's got more oil than damn West Texas right there. Midland Odessa ain't got nothing on that sucker. So I'm hoping, I'm not, I'm not hoping for a leak, but obviously something's leaking. So I'm hoping it's something simple, maybe like a valve cover leaking. Now I would just simply look, except the defibrillator tube runs to the sphincter valve, and then there's the uh, performance coil right in the way. So you really can't see much of what's going on down in there. So once again, we're gonna use our little cheating camera. There's the oily hole. So there's our head. Here's our valve cover, I do believe. So if I was a bet, man, we just got a leaking valve cover gasket. One, two, three. New spark plugs in that side. Uh, they all went right in, no problemo. Distributor cap will not be in till tomorrow at noon. But we can still go ahead and pop on our new rotor. Look at them little baby screws. What size y'all reckon those are? Look smaller than a quarter inch to me. Might be the good old metric system. 7.30 seconds is gonna work. Out with old blue. I'm gonna bring the rotor here. I brought plugs and plug wires. Plug wires have been returned because someone taped up the box. But no rotor, huh? There she be. <laughs> there she be. And good. So I noticed this sucker's got a heat riser on it. I don't think I've ever had anything with one like this. Or I've never worked on it anyhow. That clip definitely just broke. Now what in the electronic microwave we got going on here? You just put power to that and you can cook some, some stuff on there? A little smoky sausage or what? I can send this over to sleeper dude. He can cook his little spam sandwiches on there. What in the do not reinstall that do we got going on here? So here's what came off there, obviously. And, oh yeah, I already moved that over here. We do not have one of these to put back on there. I can't say I'm necessarily concerned about putting that on there. Regular old gasket, probably be good enough for me. I thought that may be a plate that goes on the bottom side, but that is definitely built into this whole setup. Not that we're putting that on right now, I just wanted to pull that off because I've been curious if it was built in or what. All right. I know we're getting closer to soccer practice time, uh, but I was looking here. We got all kinds of belts to change. Our alternator's gonna loosen up two of them, but then we're gonna have to figure out how to loosen up the power steering and the air conditioning. Lucky us. Start with our alternator. That one's easy enough. The real question is, do the belts come off around the fan? We should be able, yeah, we should be able to wiggle that. A little tricky to get it off there. Uh, do y'all think that thing was probably hanging on for dear life? Damn sure a Pot County belt, only missing a few teeth. That's the first one, I'm gonna lay them in order. Oh yeah. Uh-oh, we got bad alternator. You can hear the bearings or bushings, whatever's in there uh, squeaking going out. I don't know if you can see, but that thing's actually wobbling some. And then me, myself, when I grab that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of play in that thing. So it looks like we'll be putting an alternator on this rig as well. Good thing we done ordered the lowering kit because so far we done blew the budget on parts for mechanican. We wouldn't have been able to buy the lowering stuff, but now we done bought the lowering stuff, so we gotta do the mechanicin, so hey yo, 
everybody wins. Yeah, she's metric, huh? Get old 15 mil. No, there ain't enough, huh? Oh yeah, she must have moved some. We got slack now. I think we could get that after we get the power steering set up. Uh, looks like that bolt in there. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, we got a we got a bracket on the back side as well. Oh yeah, that's it. There it goes. And try to motivate her a little bit. Is that not loose enough? Helps if you loosen it and tap it. Had to pull our wiring off. And then I'm gonna try to roll that down into there. And then we'll pull it back up out of there. Yeah, gotta be smarter than the belt. <sighs> gotta be smarter than the engineers who put heaters in your intake manifolds and vacuum lines everywhere. That's the order they go. Of course guys, we're just reversing the order of what we just did, nothing special here. Yeah. I'm tightening down that bolt, tighten down that bolt, and then uh, it's soccer, soccer practice time, guys. We'll be back on her in the morning. Motor-wise, kind of up here, I think we're at a stop until we get more parts. I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of looking underneath that hood, so let's switch it up. Right there should be a new gas tank for this thing, I do believe. We've got an option for two different senders. I don't know what's going on in the gas tank situation. I just know we need to put a new one in it, especially after what we've seen in that uh, carburetting bowl yesterday. Don't give me any confidence in the tank that's in this thing. Step one, clean out the old bed. Good thing when I cleaned up the inside of the truck, I just put it in the back of the bed. Oh. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Beautiful example of some tail light lenses for this truck with the chrome job. s tentacious C10 Jack Blackburn. He sent these out. Dang! Looks like he sent us out a couple ball joints, a dash install kit, and a Pioneer. That's the same kind of radio I used to run in all my mini trucks. Got a couple little speakers there, a little extra blazer rear brake spring set what this be that be a new ignition lock oh yeah someone done replaced the factory radio with the old pioneer so maybe we will uh, swap her out i ain't gonna lie though if it had the old grandpa looking one that went with the rest of the dash we would have left it so thanks to uh old jack black burn i almost called you jack black Oh, what do y'all think these little light leaf springs are for, huh? Not not to lower it or anything. And I will get the rest of the crap out of here. The truck just took a pee pee right into my shop. Oh, hey there, custom exhaust. Still got the spare up in here. Out back we got the red long strokers. Back here, we either got a brake line leaking or this whole thing leaking. Brake hose super stiff. Drive shaft has a water leak. Whole exhaust is rusted, come to find out. Not the catalytic converter though, it's a good Cadillac. Someone done buggered this Y pipe together at one point. And it looks like some oil is right there. And we're gonna hope that's coming from the, uh, that very super leaking valve cover up top. And not the rear main seal. Frame and other stuff all looks pretty good underneath here though. All of our lines and stuff don't look too suspicious. 
Of course, this has to be leaking. All right, with this thing in there, the main thing we're looking to do is pull our uh, bed bolts up in there. One, two, three, and then four at the back. That one's already loose for us. What are those, 17 mil? 19. 17 was too big. About 15 mil. Oh, baby. Too much torque. That one's missing. That sucker's stuck. Let's see if a little heat and looby dooby will change your mind. It's getting hot, hot, hot. Spice it up, baby, spice it up. Little heat and looby dooby goes a long ways. What the hell? How come that'll reach on, oh. Cause it was backed out some already, dummy. How come that can reach the other side? That one was not happy. Last couple, we're gonna have to earn them. I'm gonna do our ground strap. Other than that, we got our hoses. We should have to do it right there. And then our wiring. It looks like it disconnect right here. Pulled that ground strap, just gotta pop that apart. Pop and our license plate light wire, which may be spliced in about 14,000 spots. But we can just pull on that one connection and she'll fall right apart. Let's lower her back down now. Houston, we have returned to ground safely. Think she's free. Get the lift out the way. Hey, y'all give me a break on the damn lift, okay? I seen y'all. Oh, you got the left arm deluxe in the front that should be straight out. You should be able to full open your door. Y'all talk about me using the wagon on there. Two things, even though I held up three fingers. Two fingers and a thumb. Two things. One, I'm completely new to using a lift, guys. Uh, go run a mile right now, and if you've, ever, if you've never ran, let me know how running a mile goes. It's probably gonna kick your ass. I don't know, uh, try being a little kid and writing your, your, your name for the first time, huh? How'd that go for you? You misspelled it, and your name was Ed, E-D. You couldn't do it. What'd it take? It took practice and experience. So am I gonna look like a pro using my lift for the first time? Probably not. Did y'all forget the shape of the frame underneath that wagon's the shape of an X? Probably so. That frame literally goes like this. I was like, pull it back some. Well, one, I was already grabbing like right there on the wagon. If I would've came back, there wouldn't be nowhere to grab. Plus I couldn't actually get to the frame. I had to get on the trailing arms. Cause not only does it X, it starts to kick up guys. It's a goofy setup. So consider them factors before you're the lift expert. Uh, how'd I do on this go around? I, I do notice that one's got the long stroke on the back and that one does have that little like whoop whoop jog in it to come straight back that away. So where's all my lift experts that I do better this time? Boy, I hope so. Cause I don't want to be dropping vehicles or breaking lifts. Hey, ho, oh baby. Let's push our luck a little bit. Did we miss a bolt? Please don't tell me we missed a bolt. Oh, we did miss a bolt. I thought that one was missing because I seen that hole right there. We're about to try to pick this bed up off the corners and off the back support. I think we'll be okay. So we're gonna try to get this right on the corner of this since there's metal on the front for support. I think right there's a good spot. We'll get this one in a good spot. Now the back, 
I'd actually like to get up to here. I don't know we're gonna have enough height. Let's see here. Should be kind of close. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Starting to pick up, but the frame started going with it. Oh yeah, because of this thing? I'll be honest, I've never messed with one of these. There we go. Uh, I guess it just falls off there. I didn't do it, I just got the magic touch. Boy howdy, that's one way to pull a bed. Dang right. We're about to go old school mini truck and make it do one of them damn dancing beds. Hmm. <laughs> what are we going to do with our bed now? I know what we're going to do with it. This one's a little wide, so uh, we gotta go to the wheel opening. Slow and steady wins the race. Replaced all that. I don't know why I didn't just cut it in the first place. Strap was glued to it. Now they did send out, like I said, two different sending units. So I'm not sure which one we need. FG16A or FGO or FG06D. I just assumed it's gonna be the smaller box because that other one looked entirely too tall. In fact, that may even be difficult to get down in there. how that comes with that little cover. Ooh, baby, brand new tank. Y'all wanna see what's in the old one? Who knows, maybe it's good. suspicion it was gonna be a good one growing damn barnacles whole inside just lined with rust every bit of it look like Oklahoma pond water in there Got a big hunk of o-ring 
And other than that, she should go right together. I'm trying to use my noggin here. Up until this point, I had every intention of putting that gas tank right back in, except we, one, need to wash up the back of the frame somehow, if possible, before we start working on it. And we're gonna be lowering this thing. We got uh, leaf springs, lowering blocks, shocks, and uh, yeah, to do that leaf spring, it's gonna be right in the way. And we could go ahead and start messing with all that, except I don't really want to. Uh, I was planning on doing more of the mechanical stuff right now. So I think we're better off to just be patient on our gas tank and we'll put it in after we get all this back stuff done up. A little safety chain action just in case. I actually tried to pick it up from the back of the bumper and couldn't a minute ago. So I don't think we got too much to worry about. Trying to get to our fuel pump. Oh, well, she's down here somewhere. Shoo, she is tucked in there, ain't she? All right, so it's a two bolt flange. It's got the spring pusher piston deluxe on the back side. That thing don't play no games, does it? Got our inlet, our outlet, our return line. So if we can see one bolt on bottom, that means there's one on top we gotta get somehow. And she came with all kinds of gaskets and instructions, which probably ain't a good sign. Meh, instructions are overrated. One clamp. Two clamp and some fuel. That was my rigged up setup to get us from the salvage yard. Don't worry about that. Get our turn off and our bottom bolt. One bolt, probably impossible to see because it's damn near impossible to get to. But I got our line wrench down there. Sir Mordecus would be proud. I'm gonna use old stubby and finish getting that line off. There she be. Is that quarter inch? Put this piece of quarter inch line on here. I thought that was five sixteenths. It ain't. Good thing we got instructions for a different style of pump versus what we have. World one had that flat little seal like that one there. She sits right down in there nice. So I'm gonna go back with this. It's gonna be easier to get to it from the bottom side. So I'm gonna try from down here first. Got it started. Definitely easier than trying to do it up here. And this is gonna be a pain, so I'm just gonna get her dead, guys. Little pro tip, uh, start the bottom one. It's much easier to get to, but just do like a thread. Then go to the top, and you should have enough leeway. You may have to barely push. Of course, it's gonna depend on where the little cam lobe thingy is that shoves on it. Uh, but I was able to then just barely get the top one started, and then you run them down a little at a time, boom, till she's flush. Pick you up a couple hoses, and she should be good to go. Oh crap, I meant to blow them lines out before we hooked on them hoses. Y'all watch back here. Did we get anything? Looks like we may got a little bit. Look underneath here. There's oil coming from way up there. Valve cover gasket as well. I can see it on the back side where it's actually leaking out. Gives us hope for our oil on the bottom side. I started looking because I noticed there's some on the oil filter. You can see where it's running down it and then I think that's where our oil leak's coming from. That's making it down to the dust cover. That's what I'm hoping. Also hoping this alternator comes off here easy. Guys, they're done a shoot ton of dirt work next door. I 
They're trying to build a road across what used to be a whole water dam lake over there, pond, reservoir, I don't know. Uh, so if you hear the beeping in the background, that's because there's a dozer over there backing up nonstop my whole, like throughout the whole week. It's all I get to listen to. It's my absolute favorite. If you can't tell, hey, it quit. It's just so you can drive forward. And then guess what? It'll start going backwards. It'll start again. It should be pretty easy to kick, uh, get off here. One bolt, one plug. Get that off the back. Be free, little charging device. I'd like to take that beeper off that bulldozer and stick it where the sun don't shine on him. And every time he goes to drop a deuce, everyone will know he'll be in the bathroom beeping. We're gonna have to do a little switcheroo because I notice this one don't come uh, dual pulling for the twin turbo supercharger over there. That just ain't gonna cut it. Just a simple swap a roo will do. Oh yeah, that sounds much better. With her roughed in, we can get our other two belts on. Yes, sir. I think all them are the correct belts. I can't believe we got lucky and did that. You know how that goes sometimes. You got four belts and you order the ones and they really don't start matching or working or whatever. Maybe that's just my luck, I don't know. Usually it's not what just happened there. Spoke too soon, did I? <laughs> this one on the back super tight, this one on the front super floppy. I'm sure that means our pump down there is probably adjustable somehow. And we gotta adjust all of this crap. That's great. And the bolt on the back, loosen it and we're floppy. Now we can do the alternator, then that. Both of them are pretty damn tight. Next step, I think we're gonna pull the valve cover, see what it's gonna take to do that. It just made that engine look so much better and all it did, all we did was blow the crud off of it. And getting these valve covers off does not look like it's gonna be fun, let's be honest. They're plum covered in crap. Covered in doohicks and hick dewies. Makes me not even wanna touch them, but we gotta get them. There's so much stuff attached to them. It's so much. How incredibly stupid. Ah. I gotta try to loosen this whole bracket. Two bolts uh, go down into the exhaust manifold. We're lucky neither one of them broke. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Now we can kind of work around that some. Two goofy studs in there. I think that's it. Oh, she's free. As long as we can wiggle worm it out from underneath there. Those brackets, the damn throttle and transmission kick down whatever's. Yeah, of course they would be attached. That makes sense. Not the prettiest engine we've ever seen. But she runs good and had good compression, so you know what? We'll take it. What we won't take is this leaking valve cover gasket right here. She's a little crunchy. It's right there. Plenty of oil right there rolling right out the back. Guaranteed that's where she was leaking.
quick little cleanup job there. I think we may go for some RTV if I can find some. Not the prettiest job I've ever done. Wipe that surface down uh, as good as I could. Learn something new about these. Look at that split right there. That edge is actually quite uneven. I'm talking about right here, guys. The top part's actually our intake manifold, and right there, man, that's like at least the sixteenth of an inch off. Now the back one matches up pretty dang good. That just don't. Now it don't look like it was leaking there. So I might dab us a little bit of RTV right there, and then I'm gonna try to slap her back together. Little slappy, slappy, slappy. Come on, baby, please be good to me. Got one started. Going together, the passenger side whipped me. Coming apart, the driver's side. Holy crap, guys. This is crazy if you ask me. You see how that glove's looking? That's how I'm feeling. <laughs> Man. Oh, hallelujah, right there. She's snugging down. I didn't think it was ever gonna happen. That bolt on the very back is a pain in the ass and that's saying it nicely. Guys, this engine's covered in RTV. I mean, just everywhere is all over my hands. That side, it worked beautifully. This side, man, getting that, that thing in there was hell. Uh, I bet I just spent an hour on that side, guys. If someone told me they'd been to hell and back and uh, when they got there, Satan was like, here, change the valve cover gaskets on this truck, and it was one of these. I wouldn't even be surprised. I done walked through the fire. I've been there and back. I did it, y'all, I did it. Hell, I ain't even done yet. <laughs> Still got the rest to go. That bolt goes through and pushes that, that then goes over the valve cover. So even to get that sucker off, you gotta take this bolt out right here. <clears throat> All right. It is like 410, which means that thing put a hurt 10 on me. Man, that took a lot more time than it should have, or than I thought it would have. High performance unit, putting this fab shot blue. Guaranteed to turn this truck into a smart ass. Lock her on. Now let's throw some new plug wires at her. Remember that one right there was number one. And somewhere in this mess, we got that little cap thing that tells us the rest of her fire in order. Oh, right there. Mm. Pop that one on. Well, I'm gonna be honest, all this is pretty ugly looking. So I'm not gonna worry about making it the prettiest. I just want it to clear our exhaust more or less. Oh. Wondering where that came from. Looks like it goes right here. Oh, it literally goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's pretty common, but I ain't never seen that before. Of course, I ain't worked on a lot of stuff. Small block Chevys and Datsuns, baby. Running these are not too shabby here. Got two on, so this is number three. Some of these I'm having to use them pliers. Number four. Number five popped right on, no pliers needed. Number six. Yeah, there's so much crap on the motor. Those things just disappear, you can't even see them. The one to number one is kind of long and floppy. And eventually it could get down on the exhaust, so I'm gonna do one zip tie on this side up to this loom. And I ain't even gonna pull that sucker tight. I just don't want it to be able to flop. And that right there will do the job. Little covers on, coil wires on. I figured since we're in here, we might as well pull our thermostat. It's real easy to get to here. Oh, barely getting any water. She's definitely, she definitely was a little low then. 
What's in there looks pretty good though. Use a super scraper on most of that. The wire wheel will never hurt nothing though. I just figured it would be nice and pop a new one in. I always just drilled a hole in them before I install them. In my mind that lets a little bypass work around it, whatever. I notice this sucker up here is pitted right there, right there. And right there, that's pretty stinking close to the edge. Plus that's recessed, like maybe an O-ring could go in there, but not really, because O-ring would be too thick. I'm gonna plop that right there. Then we'll bring in the new gasket. Looking beautiful, looking good. And I may RTV this sucker a little bit. I usually wouldn't, but that pitting, uh, that ain't no fun to deal with. It starts leaking in there. Hell, might as well. Everything else got RTV on it. There's RTV there, 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 there. We're not keeping the truck anyhow, so in the future, this will just be someone else's problem, I'm sure. Tilt it don't seal up and we gotta pull it apart again, then it'll be my problem. It'll seal or it won't. You're ready to put the old carburetor machine right back on. Thought we were gonna have that carburetor on this morning when I started yesterday. I also didn't realize what all we were getting into here. I ordered us a fuel filter, guys. I did not realize this was the only fuel filter for the truck other than the sock in the tank. There's a spring that went in there first, so I put that spring in, and hopefully all that's sitting in there correctly. Because it's in there good now. Now y'all have watched me struggle and struggle, and uh, yeah, I just imagine that putting that on there, it's gonna be just as fun as it was taking it off, so I don't really think I'm gonna make y'all watch that. We got our new gasket right here. I'm gonna struggle my way to getting this carburetor right back on. Our four bolts went easier than I expected, actually. Now we just got a bunch of vacuum and our little linkages to hook up. I know where that one goes. Hmm. These three should go here. I'm assuming those just go like that. Boom, boom. So that means that one goes on the bottom. I think I got her all hooked up correctly, guys. All the vacuum around the back. Uh, fuel lines hooked up. All that or return spring. That sucker. It goes right here on her lid. So I'm going to hook it up to just as much as I can. Almost forgot our gasket for this. Put the old battery back up. Out back just for temporary. Set our gas tank there. And from a return in our supply, just drop those. That other one I think is just a vent. So we shouldn't have to do anything with that. And other than that, well, cranking and putting gas down, it's gonna be difficult. So I'm gonna do what I can. That right there may go down to our bowl. I sure hope so, cause it's going somewhere. Whoa, lid popped off, shot that away. I forgot, that horn switch is sensitive. And uh, in the junkyard, I disconnected that. Yesterday when I seen that wire undone, I was like, oh, our horn's unhooked. For a good reason. I may have played it cool, but that scared the crap out of me. Well, fired up. Ran out of fuel. enough it'll pick up fuel. Ah, we just need the fuel.
Well, that ain't good. Says we have fuel. Maybe we don't. Got me good. Gas kind of tastes like one of them little green hard mints, the one that are green package. They're a little round hard candy with the hole in the center. Know what I'm talking about? That's what gas tastes like. It's running on gas when we give it gas, but it's acting like it ain't getting gas, but we know we're getting gas up to here, then maybe our float's stuck? Oh yeah, she's dry in there, but why? Fuel's just dumping now, flowing straight out of there into there. The good news is it's running freaking amazing whenever it wants to run. The bad news is still ain't getting no fuel. And I'm literally picking the uh, bowl or the float up and down right there. I can get to it. That right there tells us our pump is pumping. Uh, I wonder if this has something to do with our filter setup. Somehow that got, I don't know. I guess we'll uh we'll crack our line there. I'll let y'all keep an eye on that. I'm gonna crank. Hmm. Well, I wiggled the wrench in there, and I got our uh, little inlet filter set up out. I got some good news here. This filter is as dry as can be, which means fuel is not getting in there, uh, which makes me happy. Because in my mind, that means it's sealed off right here and we're not gonna have a needle and seat problem, which I do not wanna get back in that carburetor. And I'll be honest, getting this in and out of there is a total pain in the ass. And there's a little flapper of some sort in here that ain't opening. And I think this thing in here is supposed to hit it and open it. Am I doing this backwards? I'm doing it backwards, ain't I? The fuel would go around this. It's gonna catch here and then send it into the carburetor dummy. Well, this little spring thing in here uh, popped off there, but I don't think we gotta worry about that too much. Yeah, now I got a little confused and half ass backwards. Uh, anyhow, I couldn't decide which way was the other. I think it had to go the way I had it. That little flapper door could only open that way. Uh, but long story short, I just decided to make this on whoever ends up winning this truck and uh, I just took it out of there. I promise there wasn't a damn thing fun about getting it on and off there. I think we're better off to relocate our fuel filter to somewhere that's easy to change and hopefully uh, no one ever has to get in that thing again. This time instead of, uh, instead of putting fuel in it, uh, we're gonna crank on it because if it's pumping now, we should be able to see it in the bolt. That's a pretty good sign right there that it's finally getting fuel. Woo, baby! Let me give her a rev. Man, oh man, guys. What a good way to end the day. 6.20, I got a headache. Because working on this headache gave me, oh no, not gas down the paint, come on. This headache gave me a headache. But, we stuck with it today, uh, powered through, and it sounds like it's running like extremely good. Definitely running better than it was. I think uh, obvious everything we did is gonna help guys as far as tune up, all the vacuum leaks, and then that carburetor not having trash in it. She just sounds happy. I like you old girl, but for tonight, I've had enough. That'll get 
get the blood going in the morning, guys. All them last couple days paid off. That thing busted right off. Sounded great. Sounded terrific. Sounded magnificent to my little pot county ears. Yeah! Foo, foo, foo! All right, calm down. It's just the S10 that started and ran. Drop our starter bolts. Our starter, I do remember it having the Mortsky effect out at the salvage yard as well. I did it here a couple times. So I'm gonna disconnect the battery, I already did. And try to drop the sucker out of here. Sure looks like a tight fit though. Gotta pull that whole cover or what? What in the Sam hell's going on here? Good golly. Is that the dust cover that's not removable? Because our exhaust is in the way. So taking them bolts out really wasn't very helpful, was it? We're not undoing this exhaust neither. Ain't happening. We're gonna have to find out another way. Our strut rod here, I took that bolt out the front, removed it completely. Then right there, we had a clamp that's going up to that stud, undid it. Took our uh, power cable out of that little clamp. Now shove these transmission cooler lines that way as far as I could. If you turn that thing where the solenoid's facing the A-arm, it'll start to drop out of there, it looks like. Tight fit, though. Oh, there she is. A nice, ow, oily mess. Bonked my head twice this morning. I think that uh, valve cover gasket on this side had been leaking for a minute. Starter won't be here till noon uh, while we got this thing up. Let's go ahead and uh, pull this cover. That thing is dirty. Yeah, that's Oklahoma red dirt and uh, gear oil for sure. I know that flavor. I know it well. There's a little pro tip for you. Uh, if you put the size a little bit too big for it, you can spin it and it'll knock off a lot of that. Pro tip. I didn't know that. I just happened to have the wrong size there. But it did work good. I don't think she's leaking anywhere, do you? Someone done RTV'd her up before. You can see it in all the holes. That's not as a... Uh, graceful as i was hoping to do that i was hoping the top was going to pop a little bit then i was going to set the camera down and do that with two hands at least we caught most of it i'll take what i can get you know you call me sir scrapes a lot because i'm going to sit here and scrape a lot do a little scraping then we can take a little scotch bright and a little brake clean we can really clean up the inside of this. It's looking a little better. We had some dirt and debris on that ring gear. I'm gonna spray it off there, but I'm not too worried about uh, like full trying to clean that thing. It actually looks pretty good in there. Thing be ready for a gasket we're still waiting on it uh that's okay because we got more to do still let's uh move on to our brakes i think yep oh yeah there's a little play in that since we're in the mood to make messes let's get a, a mess going here with our brake line I've never taken a brake line off like this before. This has got a big old nut on the back side instead of a clip. Big old threads on it. Yeah, 
And with the old, work pads still had a little bit of life in them. Oh crap, just thought of something. I didn't order new wheel seals for the new rotors. Look, cotter pin. Look who's all loosey goosey here, guys. I didn't get any turns on that. Yeah, that's why she had a little wobble to her. Trying to glove up. I called and ordered us some wheel seals. They had two in stock, luckily. Gonna play hardball, huh? Everything came off the driver's side good. Now that rotor was not loose. Only thing that was tricky was this brake line. Could not get this. But luckily, the little tab just bolts to the frame. So I unbolted it, brought it over here. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. We get the rest of our other old stuff here. And basically, we just gotta put a cleaning on it. Most of the time, guys, unless you know a bearing's bad, uh, they can't really go bad. A good little inspection and looking at them, just making sure nothing looks ate up or worn, which it does not. This looks perfectly fine. In fact, it's a Tempkin bearing, so it's actually a pretty good bearing. So I have no intention of uh, replacing these. We're just gonna clean them up and repack them. Built a lot of that old grease right out of there. We'll get our inside one cleaned up a little bit. Quick little spit shine on our spindles. And this would all be ready to go back together if we had our wheel seals. We want to clean up here really good because that's where our wheel seal uh, seals too up on that lip. So I'm gonna get that sucker up there nice and clean. Let's have a look at our brake drum setup back here. Have a little look, see here. Uh, stuff in there looks all right. Shoes are in decent shape. None of that crap's rusted out. The drums themselves, they are pretty grooved. Especially towards the inside, grooved up pretty bad. So these brakes overall uh, look pretty good. The worst thing I've seen so far on the brakes, this line that I cut right up by it, that one was pretty dry rotted, cracking out pretty bad. If this was my personal truck, and guys, like if you're trying to get something like this on the road on a super budget, I would have replaced just the cracked uh, rubber hoses and I would have bled the brakes and just ran the damn thing. I, honestly, I don't think uh, you would have had problems out of it, but uh, we're still gonna just do her up right since, since we can and since it's the giveaway truck. Let's say our spring has a spring. We got her apart. The real question is, will it ever go back together? Next, we're gonna get the wheel cylinder out of there. Of course, our brake line just unthreads. It looks like this one's held in with some type of clip opposed to like little bolts or anything. How's that clip come out of there, huh? Now I'm half blind. It looks to me like we'd have to pry them like that. Yeah, I think that's it. We just gotta get both of them. Oh yeah, here we go. I guess I've never been into the brakes on a S10 before, because all this is kind of new to me as far as retaining clips goes. Little, uh, little clean in a can right there. Quick clean up on our adjuster, and we are ready to slap all this back together. Assuming we can figure out how to slap it all back together. 
Step one, figure out how to clamp this. Boy, I ain't got a clue. There she is. Just reached in my pocket and pulled out my flathead and wedged it on this side. Better holster that bad mama right back where she came from. Then I was able to spread them and just shove her on there. That was the easy part, probably. I'm gonna start to go back together. Now, in a set of shoes, guys, you should have one with more pad. You see there, the bigger one goes to the rear, smaller towards the front. Why? Because that's what everyone says. All right, that clicks onto there. And we are gonna try to figure out how all this intermingled and went together. We've got this that pushes over to the other shoe. We've got this little pad or lever that clicks onto there. I do have a new hardware kit though. All this stuff looked pretty good. We probably could have ran it. It does look to me like this little bush in here comes out and boom baby, we get the new chrome jobber in there. Now our two retaining springs were two different sizes. And it looks like it comes with a replacement for the uh, bigger one. That's some yellow ones, but it didn't come with any smaller springs. That done ripped me off. I'm sure these brakes aren't as bad as what I'm about to make them look like. Spring for that, it's a little too tight. I'm gonna just clean up our old one and it actually fits. Ah. Everything's going good. Just barely getting whooped here. The spring's got some ass on it. <laughs> All right, the other side should be easy. Last thing I'm trying to figure out here is we gotta get that spring to there. I'm assuming it needs to be on the back side of this little thingy. Yeah, that's how she is on this side. That's gonna make her a little tricky, but guys, I'm just gonna figure it out because you, you can see these things are kind of whooping me. Uh-oh, there's our other parts. Maybe we can pull her head out of her hind end. Get that crap out of our way, put our spring in, put our adjuster in, then worry about putting this in. And that, my friends, is how you make uh, drum brakes be way harder than they should be. I love working on junk stuff. I love working on junk stuff. I love working on junk stuff. You say it three times, it comes true. May have forgot to put that on there. Putting it on there wasn't too bad now that I know what to do. Spray the back down. She dripped a lot of fluid and ran down the back because someone didn't bleed that off or anything. You know, just let it steady drip. That was smart. And thanks to our bleeder, we can't even get our line wrench on there. So I'm gonna pull that bleeder, tighten down our tube nut, put the bleeder back in, and then hop over and get the other side caught up to this point. Get a little paint ready for our drums here. Knocked out that other side in like 10 minutes. That side was embarrassing. On that side, I just did what I should've done on this side, which was put the adjuster and bottom spring on, bloop, pop it in place, pin it, put the levers, the springs, wham, bam, it was done. Guess it's been a while and I forgot how to do drum brakes. That one's gonna take two coats. We got plenty to do around here besides wait on paint to dry though. I 
think that's all of them. Where do we service this bad girl at? Right there. Oh man, is that supposed to be an Allen? She's a little packed. I got me some lunch and it was pretty good. Looks like she's a three eighths. Whoa, I didn't think little guy was gonna have enough. Let's see if this is gonna work. Oh baby, gonna hit it with the super fill. I didn't even know I had this little uh, nozzle thingy in there that screws on this bottle. Cut us a little vent hole. That should make her flow a lot easier. This thing was definitely thirsty. Zippity, oh, 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 zippity doo da, zippity day. My, oh, my, we are making a mess. Thought I heard someone in my driveway, so I went to look. Holy cow. How'd she get so over serviced? I don't know. <laughs> Full is full. It was about the perfect amount though. Here's a question. Have we got more fluid on the floor or in the drain pan? All right. Trying to wrap up the rear. Got our brake line. Look how much crap is on this guys. Just thick as can be. Can't even put your line wrench on there because of the crud. Craziness. Out with the old, in with the new. adjusters out right there a little bit of a gap a little oblong hole you could knock that out and then you can actually reach in there and adjust uh i don't want to do that i just adjusted that and had slid the drum on and off until that had just started to rub and i didn't show that uh, but i did it before i painted them No, they could use a little more. Yeah, right there is perfect. Just barely feel any drag right there. Done, 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 done. Up front, we're gonna go with a little reassembly. Step one, we're gonna pack up some bearings. I always just put a wad over in my hand and start shoving her in. You'll be surprised how much grease you can shove up in an empty bearing. Then we'll give her a few good spins. I'll get another dollop and I'll do it again. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. The ultimate looby dooby job. Plop that in. Then we're gonna pop in our new seal. Got the Harbor Freight Seal Smacker. See if I can do it left-handed. Nice little dollop of grease. Guess I could have done that from the front side, maybe. And here we go, back together. Oh yeah, that's gonna be nice. First we just go bearing, then our washer, and then our nut. Right when she got snug, get her lined up, new cotter pin in it. Pop the cap on. She's dusty and crusty, but trusty, so don't worry about that. Don't worry, you convinced me to give it a makeover. Now it can just rest. We're gonna get our caliper ready. When you go together, your bleeder faces up. Gonna play hard to get, huh? Yep, we're not even close. 
Shove her piston in a little further. How's that? Hey, yo. You ever have one of them days working on stuff where you know you should just walk away? Well, that's kind of been me at a couple points today, guys. A couple things on the rear. That brick line over there whooped me way longer than it should have. We just ain't got time to walk away. Snug. And these little hoses, they look like they shouldn't even work. Yeah. Give that the flip job deluxe. How it goes upside down underneath there. Yeah. All right, looking good. These babies are looking sexy. I don't know about that, but uh, it does look better than what was on there. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, starter. Started our main power wire. Now I'm trying to get the one that goes to our uh, solenoid. Hey there, Delilah. What's it like in New York City? Usually I'm a decent mechanic, but today I'm pretty shitty. Yes, I am. Sleeper dude likes to eat spam from a can. I'm a terrible singer, but uh, makes me feel better, guys. Nothing to relax you like a beautiful set of vocals. A, a nice set of acoustic ear pleasuring. Acoustical ear pleasuring. Wiggle worm. Oh. <clears throat> All right. Uh oh, that don't sound good. I didn't know I could lean that far back. <laughs> Cross threaded it started though. Oh, she wasn't crossed. Now there's a shin that had came out of there, so I did put the shin back in. I do believe that's everything we had tore into. Well, I sure made a mess today. Now some of that dust and debris was underneath there from blowing off the engine yesterday. But man, we're gonna, yeah. Broke in that old shop floor, didn't I? Let's see if she wants to start since we swapped the starter. Be good to me, baby. <laughs> Can you hear the <clears throat> the umph that that new starter has compared to the old one? That thing's just whoop, whoop. Just gets after it. All right, guys, we are pretty good mechanically. Uh, the last little bit we need to do for our brakes is, I am gonna go ahead and put a new master cylinder on it. Just for the sake of having one with good seals. Uh, we really don't know how long this one had been sitting. And I just don't want it to be a future problem for someone else. Now that you've cracked all your brake lines and the fluid has got all over your shop floor, it's a good time to go ahead and suck out the fluid out of the reservoir. And as you can see, it is actually pretty dang dirty in there. So putting on a new line and giving this system a flushing definitely is not gonna hurt nothing. Boom, get both them off. Then our two bolts up there on the booster. There she be. Oh yeah, I got a lot of sludge built up in the bottom of the reservoir. Now for these, we got two to choose from. I'm thinking it's gonna be this bigger box. Sure looks like it. So it's actually a good thing we looked, because if you look at the back of that, that one matches. It's a little retaining clip. That's actually a bigger bore. Versus that one there, that edge is thicker, so yeah. Here's what we need. Except that's our old one. Here's what we need. Pop that right on bench bleed. Never heard of her. I need no stinking bench bleed around here. We'll power it through like men and struggle to get her bled after installing. I 
That may be the fastest master cylinder I've ever swapped. Everything was very easy to get to. That was nice. She's nice and topped off. And I've told y'all how I like to bleed brakes. And also why I wasn't worried about uh, bench bleeding was we use the vacuum sucker and uh, that will pull it through there. It's not the same as having to do it by like your foot pedal in there or whatever. Uh, so I'm gonna jack this thing up and then suck till I get fluid to everywhere. And then after that, uh, I've told y'all then I like to have someone actually work the pedal for me, but we're gonna get the, we're gonna get the system flushed more or less. Dropping good already. I can see it. Here comes the fluid. Here comes the fluid. We had pretty good suck on it all the way around. Got good amount of fluid. If you're not getting a good amount, then it means usually you got a leak somewhere. Uh, the front wasn't as good as the rear, but we'll see. I think Hank's supposed to be headed out here to give me a, I would say a hand, but I need a foot. And we gotta hurry because we got a Halloween thing tonight with my parents. We're just supposed to go to their house to watch a movie or whatever. So we're on a time crunch now. I need you to work the pedal. Go ahead. Is it getting hard at all? Uh, yeah, it is. Go ahead. Last one. Go ahead. That's it. on the case we're gonna have to be putting another new starter on it jeez hey just pull forward whoo baby look at hank go and the s10 durango keep going keep going keep going that thing's longer than a monday keep going keep going and stop look at that guys we got a running truck a driving truck and i didn't even get to do the first test drive she is idled up so we could probably mess with that but it's probably the first time it ain't had a million vacuum leaks and stuff like that, you know? But right now, I'm super happy. She's smoking a little bit. <laughs> Back it out the shop in a second. She missed the oil, good job. Let's see her out in some daylight, huh? Woo, thought she was gonna hit the front. She made me nervous. Dang! You gonna hit the man van or what? Drive it this way. Hell yeah. Wait till we drop that old girl on her nuts. Just slam it down. Y'all like my rigged up gas tank right, right next to that rotating drive shaft? Does it drive good? Everything feel good? Oh yeah, no, it's nice. Brakes, gas, yeah, brakes steering. Are... You feel like you're in a grandpa truck? Mm -hmm. You look like your name's Peepaw. <laughs> better slow down, don't hit that shop. These brakes work great. Say that again for the camera. His brakes work great. Yeah, you dang right, they work great. You can pull it back in the shop. Okay. Please. Bam. Good job, Hank. Thank you. Safety glasses are back, baby. Got my new prescription in them, that way I can see again. We can be extra safe. I wore them to bed last night, my wife loves them. Who wouldn't want to look over at their bed and see this looking at them? We let Hank drive on it some yesterday. Uh, I'm gonna fire it up this morning and I'm gonna do a little driving on it. Got the shop pretty clean. We had a good week in it, doing some mess. Uh, maybe I'll get where I'm not so sloppy. But guys, sloppy's just my style. So I told y'all we ain't gonna coat these floors because this is a shop and she's gonna get dirty. All dirty, dirty. Need to fix our drooping headliner 
she idles up, but I do believe that's actually the choke feature working because once she warms up a little bit, you're ever she goes down. Uh, that being said, I still think the idle's a little high. We'll end up messing with that eventually, I'm sure. Uh, brakes feel amazing. Feel real good. Truck rides good. Now, Hank, uh, I kept telling her to give it some gas, and she was, but she didn't know what she was doing. Holy crap, guys. This thing's way more better. Yeah, she thought she was going to hurt it or something. Oh, yeah. Hey, she responds good, guys. Let's take her this way. We'll go check on our frogs at the pond. Yeah, the pond's a little low. Our turtles aren't out there. I do got a couple turtles living in there. Just take out the Johnson grass, no big deal. Now somewhere out here is my pooper lines, the lateral lines. Yeah, I can see where the dirt is, so we're gonna make sure to swerve them. We may have to take out the wall of Johnson grass to get around it. And we're around the end there. We're safe now. A little off-road driving's always a good test drive or whatever, you know. If you got a loose ball joint, let's just break it out here. That way we know. Oh yeah, she's got a little power to her. She popped the old 15s loose and got a little squirrely in the grass. Fast and the Furious, Pot County Drift around the brush pile, go. Oh yeah, come on baby. There she goes, here she comes around. Uh-oh, uh-oh, she, uh, she died. Everything was going good until it wasn't. We may not be picking up gas with this nice custom setup of ours. All right. I thought we may not been getting gas, but then I stomped on it and it started up like maybe somehow we flooded it. Off-road test, the hill climbing adventure. <laughs> Pull in here where you can't open your door. And so far guys, uh, I'm happy with that. It seems to be a pretty good, I told y'all it was gonna be a good truck. Uh, I really believe that. But before the response from the carburetor, you kind of had like ease into it, feather this, then floor that, you know, it's just, it wasn't right. And I think we're pretty close to right. We, we just had idle down and I think we're gonna have us a little winner here. Oh, uh, 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 oh, 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 well, I think we're gonna wrap that for our mechanical stuff here, guys. I'm sure there's a thing or two we'll end up doing more, uh, but I think we got a pretty mechanically sound truck now, at least to the point where we need to be putting some miles on it, looking for any other little crap that's gonna go wrong. We got us a real good mechanical base. Now I think next week, we'll probably just roll in to the suspension side of things. We're gonna rebuild the front, drop springs, drop spindles. We're gonna do drops leaf springs lowering blocks i do believe i got nice drop shocks all the way around for you guys i, I usually don't even run that for myself you get the cheap monroes uh, but i got some good shocks for this rig we get all that in we're gonna do some stripping down we got a gas tank and stuff put back in a little seed notch in action we've got all kinds of good stuff coming up for the giveaway truck uh man I think we found a good little truck. Don't worry about the slight amount of sludge in the engine. I think she's got plenty of life left in her. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I will, I'll be honest, I was dreading working on this thing mechanically and I actually had a fun time working on it. Now a couple days it was kind of putting me through my test, through, through the paces, testing me I mean. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I'm having more fun working on this little truck than I thought we were gonna, than I was gonna. Mainly because I was intimidated by the smog stuff. Anyhow, uh, guys, I appreciate all the support. Y'all coming back and watching. I hope y'all enjoyed getting to see some good mechanicing going on in the in the new shop here. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for the support of helping me uh, build this dream of mine. I have in a space where I can actively work and walk and mechanic. We did it crunched up on top of ourselves for years, and uh, having a proper space, a proper lift. Uh, to do this and not literally be in 
pain right now from getting up and down a million times last week is going to be a game changer guys so thank y'all for all the support watching uh, puddingsfabshop.com for all that good quality merchandise last week we did a restock of the vehicle shirts the datsun yeehaw travel law international and toll roller those five i do believe so maybe we still have it some in stock i don't know because ain't released yet as of today uh puddingsfabshop.com for that good quality merchandise y'all choosing to support that is what has made a large part of this all possible me and my family handling handling that's allowed us to grow so i can't thank you guys enough can't thank you enough for just watching the videos and coming back time and time again it means more to the this little pot pot county kid than y'all probably know or realize and i can't thank you enough uh, i'm on the instagrammer i'm on the patreon and i will see you guys next time but do not forget sitting on your ass won't finish your project. I'll see you guys next time.